Welcome back to Home Wizards, where we love to help you improve your home and improve your life. In other words, when you walk inside the place you call home, you go, you know what? Things are pretty darn good. Yeah, you go, hey, you know, my house actually doesn't stink. It's pretty great after yeah, all. Yeah, I'm going to keep living. I love I like, it. I, like, <laughs> I can move on. I can live on another day. Well, hopefully better than that. Eric yeah. Stromer, Cindy Dole here, and thanks for hanging out with us. And this is always a great time of year to grill. I mean, we in California can grill any darn time we want. You know, I grill probably three nights a week, summer, winter, fall, winter. You name it, I'm grilling. I mean, I think people across the country are grilling nonstop because you just make enclosures and you deal with it because it's so much fun. Put on a park yeah. and make the steak. Why not? <laughs> Why not? You can grill in Alaska. You can do it anywhere. I grew up in Chicago. We did it there as, as well. I'm a grilling madman. So let's talk about how do you uh, how do you buy a grill um, that's going to be a smart choice. I mean, there's so many different options out there, and Consumer Reports will tell you that the most expensive isn't always the best, but we thought we'd break it down in terms of what you're looking at when you're out there going to the stores maybe this weekend or throughout the week. You know, you're looking at a grill, and you want it to give you that, that performance. Yeah, and, you, and, and I think for me, what I've learned over the years is it has to be hot. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't get hot, if the BTUs aren't high, you can't sear the meat. If you can't sear the meat, then what's the point of grilling? You know what I mean? If you go for a cheaper model and it's just kind of going, <laughs> you know, and like tiny little bit, almost like a Bic lighter underneath. Yeah. It's just not going to be a great experience for you. mean for the you. solar-powered grill? Yeah, right. <laughs> kind of like those solar landscape lights. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like a little it's whiff. Just, yeah, it really doesn't have a ba- much bang for the buck, you know what I mean? So I, I like, I, first and foremost, my criteria is always how many BTUs does this grill put out, and, and, and that kind of constitutes if it's worth it for me. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, yeah, I also like to make sure that it's going to have some great grill grates. What? Do it again. You want to have you want to have you want to check out the grates. <laughs> Great grill grates. <laughs> because that you talk about the searing, you want to make sure that that is going to be the searer. You know, you want to make sure that the temperature stays more consistent than on the grates yeah. uh, that are that are the uh, the ones that are porcelain coated steel. Mm-hmm. The temperature stays more consistent on the stainless steel than the porcelain coated. So go for um, the stainless steel. Yeah, Check it out. absolutely, and easier to clean too. And then the other thing too is is I I always like it when you know your traditional gas grill has some sort of briquette configuration on the bottom that between the grill it, between the gas burner itself and the grate above. There's some kind of a medium in there that's going to keep consistent even heating, like an e- like an added shelf almost. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and that, usually they're made of ceramic and they radiate heat evenly because mm-hmm. you'll get cold spots on the grill and then. You know, the steak or the whatever you're cooking is going to have one hot area where the ones there burn, but the ones on the perimeter don't cook as well. That makes me crazy. So make sure that you have a nice, even ability to heat the entire surface. And that seems to happen over time, too. Uh, Just as your grill gets dirtier, Mm -hmm. then you notice that the heat is not circulating evenly, right? Uh, Wait, hold hold on. Ding, 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 (laughs) ding, ding, ding. Time for a tip. You want to know what it is? (laughs) If a cheap way to clean the grate is is a piece of tin foil wadded up in a ball... And then you just hold it with your hand and scrub back and, and forth along as, the tines. And that's your brush, right? Yep. Instant brush. Love that. Works great. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Okay. Back to show. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, it's a good idea to give your gas grill cart a test drive. Have you noticed that some of the carts are kind of wobbly? Terrible. So when you're in the store, don't be afraid to you know kind of move it around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, pick it up, move it around, because as, as you do move it, those screws are going to come undone over time, and it's going to be real floppy, almost like a bad shopping cart experience at a big oh, box gosh, store. Oh, gosh, yeah. By the way, I was, at, I was at one the other day, and I had to audition four. It was like four of them. Each wheel kept flopping back and forth. Mm-hmm. There's something caught in like a piece of yarn is in one. One's bent. Finally, after the fifth, fourth or fifth try, I got a good one. But you, you have to audition, to your point, the grill as you pick it up, cantilever it on the two wheels that have the ability to give you so that the thing will move. What did I just say? Have the ability to give you. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was I was speaking <laughs> like ba- a bad version of Native American tongue. <laughs> but anyway, well, yeah, you-, you want to be able to pick up the grill, move them around with those wheels in place, and it gives you the ability to then c- transport from one area to another. If it starts to rain, for example, and you got to cover yourself, then you can move it easily. Yeah, the more you're going to yeah. move it, you definitely want to have four wheels instead of two. You don't want to be doing wheelies, <clears throat> you know? You want to make sure it has, I think, There four. you go, yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, you were able to say it in three words. It took me like 13 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> what about the igniter, uh, an easy igniter? Do you have one of those like ours at home? You push a button and you hold your lighter, 
Oh. You know, oh, and it yeah. goes something like, I don't know, that wasn't That's a pretty very, good sound. <laughs> you, you gotta think about getting in the Foley business, creating sound for I'm movies. I'm going there, and I'm just going down the street. All right. Wait. Yeah, that's pretty good. That was kind of like that. Um, but if you have that, um, if, the, if, if the grill comes with the igniter, if it fits within your budget, I think it's easier to fire up the grill that way. No question. With that I, I have button. an igniter on my grill that's been great for four years so far. Yeah. So, and again, I paid a little bit more for mine. I was prob- and, and to your point, it's not necessarily a more expensive grill that matters, but in my case, I picked a winner, and it's good. been about four years. It's working great. Uh, check the, uh, the grill handles, especially on the lid that you lift upward, make sure that the handles are large enough so that you can open the grill without touching your knuckle, your knuckles, your knuckles to the lid because right. you're going to burn yourself. Yes, Have you had you that are. happen where you're like, there's no room in your, because especially if you have big man hands, you know, you're mm-hmm. in there and you can't, you can't move the lid. And so when it's extremely hot, ouch. Yes. That's not going to be fun. And I think another, if it's not welded and, and solid when you grab it, pick up the lid and look under and see if there's a place to screw tight tighter those those screws that go into the handle so at least you'll have the ability to tighten it up you know what i mean if it's just floppy and it's not spot welded well Mm -hmm. i think it's a bad choice you want structure uh and warranties you know i'm not really one to pay attention to warranties overall but you do want to make sure that your gas grill has at least a 10-year warranty specifically for the burners because you know you, those are the burners that you're using, and you so you, you can go and get another burner. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I got I I can't stress more. If you have the ability to hook any of your grills into a into main line. gas line, please do it and get the adapter that comes with these grills. Usually, and if it if it doesn't, then actually buy one and try and do that. It makes a world of difference. Yeah. I, I have spoken. And then just determine what extras you want. I mean, there's all kinds of. I mean, there's some really expensive goofy grills out there right now. Um, but I think you can get a good one for 500 to to 1000 bucks. I mean, I think that you're going to be good there. I highly recommend that you have the rotisserie. Do you have a rotisserie on your grill? You know I don't, but boy, it sure seems like a great feature. It is. What do you make in it? Like a roast pork or Ch- something? Exactly. Pork tenderloin, yeah. uh, whole chicken, um, anything. And it's, and it's it's all of a sudden you are an instant genius without really having to to babysit it. So you, you just know? stab the thing with the with the the fork, and then you put it in the rotisserie, and it kind exactly. of rotates yeah. on you. You can rotisserie a, a, a turkey for Thanksgiving time. Can you really? Yeah. It'll clear? It's that big? Just, well, just make sure it clears. <laughs> yeah. There was the time that it didn't clear at my dad's <laughs> yeah. house, and it came out black. But um, Black on one-eighth yeah. of, yeah. of the bird. But, you know, yeah. but it is, I think it's a great addition. And so, you know, if you, if you love having big chunks of meat that you want to cook for a party, why not? And make sure you have side burners, too. I like the side burners. Do well, you do and little... I, I like the side burners, and I also like the side trays that pop up if you have the ability to get that because, you know, shelf space and counter space are always at a premium outside unless you've designed a kitchen around the barbecue. Mm-hmm. So I like to have those big tables that come out, the wings, if you will. And I think it's a good idea if you don't have extra counter space to get one of those little um, bars on wheels, those little, they're like for 100 bucks, you can get them anywhere. It's yeah, like a little cart. Like Ikea or Target, yeah. exactly. And it has some little shelves and, and you can then put all of your supplies and your, your sauces and things, plates, so forth, there so that you can spread out because you need to. And then, you know, the grill cover? Oh, the grill cover. Here's here's what bugs me about the grill cover. You never can put it on immediately after you cook your food. And then by the time you get around to thinking of it, I'm usually in bed by then, and I'm just like, ah, I'm not going down putting the cover on. So I, I don't use one. And in terms of when you... I know we don't either. Yeah. In terms of when to buy the grill, you're going to be seeing a lot of sales over the next few weeks and over <laughs> the next uh, many months. But it's a good idea to really, if you want to save a ton of money, to wait till the very end, like at the end of summer. That's when you're going to, because they're going to clear out all their stuff. Yeah, now it's, it's prime barbecue buying time. They're going to get you. And take your magnet with you, not only to the store, but to your neighbors when you go to their, um, to their grill. <laughs> this is under the files of how to alienate people yeah. because you all of a sudden you start throwing a magnet at their grill and if it doesn't um well if it sticks you can say you know what you've got a crummy crummy grill yeah i won't eat your filthy meat no <laughs> way you, yours sticks no no good yeah so to your point the, if the magnet does not stick it's a it's a higher quality stainless steel I which see. means it won't rust yeah when it's outdoors and it'll just be more durable if it does hold the magnet which can hold your trials art mm-hmm. that means that it's a, you know it's a cheaper type of stainless steel it's still stainless steel it's just yeah. a thinner grade and also don't underestimate traditional barbecue mesquite types of grills right they're, they, you know, some of the great chefs swear by them. They like oh, the, I know. they like the even heating. They like the hotter flame that you can achieve through charcoal or mesquite. 
and they are way less expensive, but it just is a little more labor intensive. Yeah, I think that the smart, the, the classic smoky charcoal flavor is something that, you know, that the chefs are really going for. You bet. Right? It yeah. isn't just heating it up and and giving it the char marks. It's something a little more intense. And, and if you do go that route, you got to get the chimney. You know, where where you have that cylinder that's made out of steel with a handle, and then you pour whatever medium you're going to use to burn in that with the lighter fluid. Let it sit on there. That thing kind of creates the perfect environment to make stuff hot quickly. Then you spread your coals out and you grill that way. And then some of the high-end grills now oh. are offering combinations of one side is traditional charcoal or mesquite, and then the other side is is your gas burner. I think that's a great solution, too. All three. All yeah, different three yeah, kinds. Yeah. Well, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about, after you've cooked your meal or maybe just bought it fresh, um, how to keep your food in your refrigerator and in your home staying fresh longer. There's a yeah, lot of I, I buy stuff and throw it out and so you waste often. It. You waste it. I don't yeah. like it. And you're getting all you're getting a lot of produce delivered to your house. Yeah, aren't and, you? and I make sure that I, if I don't eat that, I'll juice it. That's, that's a good. great. That's a great solution too. If you have an abundance of stuff you can't eat, just put in the juicer. Or you give it to well, you give it to the dog and the cat, don't that, you? That dog eats so well, <laughs> better than most people on the planet. It's doing salads every day. Anyway, when you listen, when you uh, maybe a little up. bit of a weight issue coming oh, with I, Hazel. She's oh, getting a no. little little hefty around the haunches, if you know what I'm saying. Eric Stromer, Cindy Doe, Home Wizards. We love to help improve your home, improve your life. Don't go away. We're just getting started. When you aren't listening to the show, we hope that you will, and we invite you to check out our website, yourhomewizards.com. It's loaded with all kinds of fun stuff. You bet. Yourhomewizards.com. You know what's there and why I love it. What's there are great tips, great ideas to inspire you to do things, get off your rear during the weekend, (laughs) and do something on a Saturday, and guess what? It's done by Sunday. And we're talking about the planning, the dreaming, the getting, getting the spaces that you call home just a little better so that when you come home, you feel happy and relaxed and uh and just replenished. So go to yourhomewizards.com. All the shows are there. Uh, you can download the podcast. You can watch our web videos and email us. Let us know the things that you'd like us to talk about to help you with the things that you're doing in your home. Just go to yourhomewizards.com, hit contact, and email us, and we'll answer your questions on air. And also with our videos, uh, you ask, we answer. So check it out. Go to yourhomewizards.com, yourhomewizards.com.